Ooh, something's not right. Did someone switch Ooh. cams? Something just screwed up my setup for a second. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, there we go. Oh, that was a problem. Ellis wasn't sitting in his correct spot. <laughs> yeah, Ellis. Get together. But we're back. I'm sorry, when I'm not on stream, I like to relax. So, as we get back into the game, you guys were fighting against time as you moved with the sun escaping the shadow as it slowly eclipses what's left of Old Grey Valley as you make your hurried approach. Injured and worried people in tow before reaching a building that looks to be what is the remnants of some type of a shop. On the outside you see a book hanging off of a half-broken sign that whistles and wheezes against the wind as you make your approach in a chilly dare. The ever-present ever sign of the smoke leaving the chimney stack to this particular home. Or dwelling. You two should probably stay back. I'll, uh... In case it's not something we can want to face and something we want to fight. Kind of like a scram to, like, see if he wants to, like, be up beside me. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull my scarf out and lean on it. As you stand there, the door opens ajar. Barely enough room for you to see the individual on the other side, but the visage of someone the same size as Sir Randall looking in at you, though only a silhouette that gives vision of a singular eye looking at you. Not many real features are visible in the darkness of his room, though. And your perception check? Sure, go ahead. I too will do obsession check. So wise, yeah. guys. Scrum sees everything. Looking at them, even though you only have that small slit, you can tell they are also emaciated, but unlike Sarandal, this actually looks like someone that should be their size and looks the appropriate size for someone that is around 15. Can I tell male, female? Yeah. yeah. Looks like a male. Scrum will like hunch down a little bit. Um, excuse me, son. We've got wounded. Night's coming. Might we take shelter? You there. You see his eyes follow towards Annalise. What yes. are you? What rank, what rank are you? I'm a beacon of the light. As you say that, the words hang for a few seconds before the door closes. As the sound of scratching gets heard on the other side of the door. Scratching? I wait a few moments to see if that's like, like keys unlocking or chains unlocking. Yeah. I wait a few moments. And your few moments are rewarded with the sound of a creaking door opening. Hello, I'm Annalise, um, this is Scram, uh, our compatriots behind us are also members of our party. We came to this town seeing that there was some foreboding, trying to help the survivors here. Could we come inside? Moving from behind the door, you see a dirty, blonde-haired boy that looks like he's gone through equally as much crap as everyone else that you've encountered in this town excluding Sarandal. His features seem downtrodden. His eyes don't meet yours though he gestures with his head and arms to enter his home. Not really giving much resistance stopping you in that. 
I look back towards my group and I kind of nod and walk forward. I'll step to one side and usher people in. With good timing, Vannon, as you're just watching, with the slowly encroaching darkness, it's like a wave of movement that goes over the town. The temple that's in the distance, you watch as like hands of darkness seep through the windows itself, clasp, clasping on the top of the roof of the temple as if some large creature is anchoring itself to the temple itself, though its real visage and form seem to be hidden underneath the ground. Well, that's creepy. Do we all see this? Bannon sees this with his height. Young man, what is your name? Drake. Drake. If you don't mind me asking, you must be um, quite a resourceful young man to have made it this long. Uh, how is that? Uh, how, how have you come to survive when so many haven't? Don't mean to bring up bad memories, we're just trying to get a feel of this place. I still meeting your feet. He shrugs his shoulders and gives you just simple one word answers. Luck. Does he look as emaciated as the rest? Yes. We have some rations. Um, some that haven't been fouled by this place. Perhaps we could come in and talk over supper. He hasn't seemed to try to stop you guys from entering. Yeah. I make sure the door is closed. I kind of look at Scram and be like, towards the door. Yeah, once everyone's in, I'll close the door. And does it open to, out towards us or into the house? Into the house. No, I'll just sit and lean against it. What kind of windows does this place have? As you look inside, unlike the other windows that just had the burn marks, these windows seem to be boarded up. Completely. Yep. Every single entrance seems to have some means of covering the doors. Actually, he moves you scram as he goes to the very bottom of the door and nails in wood and then does so along all the lining of the door itself, leaving no crack unblocked by wood good work that's a fit a fit a bear <laughs> that's a fair bit more than luck you know what you're doing to protect yourself tongue tied wow luck's the only reason why I came across it across what this place Knowledge to survive. What are you Probably doing here? Knowledge. We're trying to help. That's all. Do you know of any other survivors? Anybody else who we could see if we could save? Apparently you've seen more than I have. He gestures as he looks towards Lisa who goes to the fire and kind of crumples in and goes into a fetal position. Sir Randall laid on the floor not far from her. Still not conscious, but stable. Just exhausted. And what have you seen? What can you tell us of the nightly occurrences or the way these creatures are? I call them leeches. They come at night, normally. They have stragglers in the day, but I've come to understand them more to be scouts than anything. Scouts? You think they're organized then? Of course they're organized. 
Look at Red Bannon. Go on. They're organized enough to attack us where we needed the most. Then after that, our means to survive. Winter came, so they took away our chances to get wood. Coal was our only option, which is what they can use. What do you mean by that? Mama never really explained it, but she thinks that they can see through it, move through it. Smoke? Or shadow? Or what exactly are you implying? Coal. Dust. Coal dust? That's why they can get into the chimneys. You said that they could face the walls. Coal dust. I understand. Like the black mark. It makes sense. Was there a particular place in town that stored coal or mines underneath? Somewhere that you can expect them to be held up if given the opportunity? There was a coal mine that was abandoned north of here, but not in the city, no. Do you know if it has any connections to the city, any, any mine shafts or anything like that? I don't know. I wasn't born here. I'm sorry, this, this is a lot. Um, I, here, eat this. And I give them a good berry, because they don't get corrupted. And I look over and I... Chicken flavor. Where is your mother? Probably dead Hannah. right now. He says looking at the very stale in his approach of Lenny saying, like, he doesn't seem emotionally drained or scarred, just very accepting. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's food. Um, it won't make you feel better. I promise. I say referring to the good berry I passed him. It's a chicken berry. Tastes good. And this one may or may not taste like chicken. I look over to grab to see if he... Okay. <laughs> I don't like chicken. What do you like? I miss strawberries. Steak. Strawberries. I can do strawberries. I hold, I hold it up to scram. I want the strawberry. Pulls out of his hands. It's magic, and this is the kind that's good for you. Please. I'm aware. He looks at it. And back to Scram. An acolyte of the dragon. My thumbs his chest. An acolyte? I didn't take it for any sort of student, Scram. Student of life. All that, perhaps. We're all students of life. So you continues. need rest. Uh, as I realize that we're now in a safe place, and I can see how thin you are in like the flickering tiny bit of light we have here. As you're saying that, he continues his gaze. Monk of the Four Paths. Yes, actually. A Monk of the Light. That's I am. And a beacon. Clever. Yes. How are you a student of the world? You said you weren't born here. How do you know of all these different cultures? My father, stepfather, gave me access to books. I like to read. You it's... identified me as, as a beacon or as a member of the church the moment you laid eyes on me. Your father or stepfather, was he a member of the church? He was. I, I don't know where he is now. And what was his name? Mark. And you haven't seen him in how long? I couldn't say. You left a journal in the church and he mentioned you and your mother. 
how happy he was to have been in your lives. But his journal ends quite abruptly, and we... Uh, in the church. Wondered what happened. Yes, it was in the church. It shouldn't have been in the church. Where should no, it have been? He said they would leave it out for him. <laughs> the kid kind of sighs. Looking like whatever was his pillar of at least complacency just got knocked underneath his feet as he turns like in. Go ahead. Come to give him a squeeze on the shoulder. What's your name, boy? Drake. Drake. Sorry, you said. I oh, did. I'm not smart. Um, dragons, they're drakes, aren't they? And one drake to another, I promise you. We'll find everyone that's left. And we'll get you out. You shouldn't give someone a promise you can't keep. I can keep it. And I will. You see my friends here? Badasses, a lot of them. I was able to mark all of you. Who do you belong to? Sorry. He says, looking towards Cain. I'm here to help just as much as everyone else here. We will help you. And anyone else that's here. We will. But we should start in the morning. It's far too late to do any sort of exploration tonight. Drake, would you mind terribly um, if we... Sebastian. Oh. Sorry. Drake, would you mind terribly if we found um, rooms to rest in? There's room. I make sure that they have no means to get inside, though. Do I see a fireplace? You do. That's where... It's... Lisa and Sarandal is. Is it a coal burning fireplace or wood? Wood. Any coal marks at all? No. I nod my head then. How much wood Lucky has left? I don't know. How much wood could he have? No, I'm just going to get into a rhyme. You see in the room a very hefty pile of what looks like broken chairs, table legs things that don't even look like it came from this house he probably ventured out in the day to do his own scavenging that he's brought into here that's good Sebastian can you use your hands of Matt a little bit I could but I'm all spent out right now I apologize as for what you said, you can stay. Though, I don't know what I can do for you for food. We With that being room. said, I don't suggest you eat anything that you find here. We've already discovered that uh, the food gets tainted. That's why uh, Lady Annalise has her berries. We'll feed you to not jerk. You're kind, but I'm damned. Everyone in this town is damned. You should leave while you can. You're not anchored here like we are. You're actually that, allowed to leave the gate. Is that what Mark told you, that everyone is damned? Does he have proof of that, or is it just... My father was... Religious superstition stepfather he was that terminology of him like coming to terms with that kind of gives him pause before looking back to you he wasn't that fatalistic so he truly believed that something damned the town an outside force he believed something caused it but not that it 
we couldn't be saved. Did he ever say... My apologies, Jake. Did he ever say why? Or at least how. Near the end, he was becoming a lot harder to understand. Last I saw him was a few months. Drake, what year is it? I don't know. I've been Um, in and out of my door for so long, I lost concept. That was mentioned in his journal. Can you describe what he meant by that? Every time you enter or exit a building, you age? How old are you, Drake? He stops and thinks. 25. How old does he look? Yeah, he looks 15, doesn't he? Correct. So time is reversing. You're getting younger. I think time has stood still since this town got corrupted. My dad only barely figured out what's wrong and was able to tell at least everyone that he could not to leave the doors. He found the connection. Apparently, us of the town closing in opening doors and moving through them affects us just as we can't leave the town itself. I... What happens when you try to leave? Sorry. Sorry. I can talk it. Sorry. We turn to them. What happens as soon as you try to leave, you turn into those creatures? He would nod. Do I know any sort of lore about going through doors? Any sort of myths or old wives' tales? That one would be a history. History check. That's 15. There was an old wives' tale that predates to the Age of the Dragons that went to tell about a dragon that was cursed for betraying its kind by going against their creation of man and as a punishment. Each time that he traversed through doors, he lost a piece of himself forever as internal punishment for everything that he did. That's a dark story. I'm not going to say that in front of the kid. Get the knowledge to myself. I'm going to stand and I'm going to walk over and give Lisa also a good berry. And then I I am going to. She's had at least one today. She did. Did she? Then we're good. Then I want to see if there's any sort of. I know you said those broken chairs. Stuff like that. Are there any couches or beds left remaining in the house? Kind of want to look at through doorways, kind of scope out the place. In front of the fire, there's one big area of pillows that you assume to be what Drake has been using as his own bedstead. Okay. Any other rooms to the hovel? Under the house? It's a two story house, so yes. Oh. There's an upstairs and a kitchen area. I want to stand and go look around. Going upstairs, you see that there's two bedrooms. One that opens up into a barren room, devoid of any like furniture. There's some clothing thrown around, but nothing important. The wood is barring the windows itself, so it just looks like four walls, no windows, anything like that. In the other room, it's completely untouched. It looks like a master bedroom with a large bed that seems to be pristine. A 
it, it looking in here it looks like this room hasn't been touched in days but okay. from what any, you understand from what this kid's been through it's been more than days for him yeah any uh any books or uh empty uh bookshelves let me see it's a library just like it going to the book or not bookshelf but you go to uh, the dresser there's a mm -hmm. small portrait and frame of him while he looked much more livelier and fuller and happier same age same age okay. next to a lovely woman that looked to be as happy as he is next to a man dressed in what looks like high summit robes with a happy smile. Uh, the robe fragments that I found, they match the robes that he's wearing in the picture? They look similar. Okay. I back out of the room. Go back down to the main area. The master bedroom upstairs, um, you haven't used it. How come? Old ghosts. Real yeah. ghosts, or it just haunts you to go into that room? It's been this long, though. It's still hard to accept she's gone. I understand, and we're sorry that we have to ask so many questions of you, but we need as much information as we can so we can fix it. If you're truly to heed my warning, I suggest you leave when sun breaks next. Does this town have a dock, like the picture we're looking at suggests? No. That's purely just a picture. Got oh, yeah. And I suppose there's no griffins in the background either. No, those are crows. The ones out on the water are way too big to be crows. They're actually quite close. <laughs> yeah, they're just really close. Let's find, let's find a place to rest here. You can take either my room, or if you feel more comfortable by the fire, you can do that. So wasn't his pillow spread out, like, in the main room right in front of the fireplace? Yes. Is this your room, or the bedroom upstairs? The bedroom the upstairs one. is technically my room. Which of the rooms, oh, actually, I'm going to ask this in character. Which of the rooms uh, faces the same wall as the chimney? My mother's. Then nobody is sleeping in there tonight. Let's I don't just think sleep in there anyway. Let's just sleep here in the main room. It'd be nice to be by the fire. They don't seem to like fire or light. It's got the smiles. It's a good thing got that light. Did you reckon with you though? I'll take the first watch. I'll take the second one. Scrum? I'm the first. Yeah, gives a kick. Okay. As you guys are going over this, he. Finally takes a bite of the good berry and his eyes kind of widen in surprise. Kind of give him like a yeah. half smile. That's rough as hair. Get some sleep, Drake. It's been a while. He kind of pats back down his hair after you messed it up. Sleep well then. You too. I see 
leaves from the room and looks to do some busy work in one of the other rooms. Leaving you guys a moment of privacy if you wish to take it. So just random theory, but I reckon going through doors takes different things from different people. Seems like it took, it took me, it's taken his age, but it's done nothing to Lisa here. Nothing visible, at least. It's, it's possible. Okay. With that theory, though, Lisa, do you feel as though you're missing anything? Check your pockets recently. Looking her over, she looks like she's um, taking the time to slowly drift in a slight light sleep with everything that's going on. You want to wake her? Nope. Okay. Nope. And what are we going to do with him? I'm curious to see what role he has to play in this. I say gesturing over to Scarreal. Surreal. Surreal. Yeah. It's not a common name, guys. He can handle himself in the fight. That's, that's uh, And he's willing to fight. So we let him rest. Then when we're going out to get, get into a scrap, we bring him with us. If we find Mark, then I'll pick him up and make sure I can't run at him. Got a feeling there's a bit of bad blood there. Can imagine. You should rest. Looking at like Sebastian and Van and both. Yes, that would be most most wise right now. It's around this point you guys hear the sounds of almost like a tidal wave of motion just beat against the house as the shade finally covers this portion of the part of the town. It's the equivalent of being in a constant hailstorm of motion and noise coming from outside. I doubt there'll be any rest tonight. I don't accept that. Try. And then Sebastian, both of you sleep. Karen, you take Sebastian's watch. Very well. The the stairs that go up up to the second floor is there is it one of those staircases that is sort of um, got the middle point landing uh, before it goes up like two separate flights or is it one straight flight going all the way up? One straight going all the way up. Check. If you all sleep down, downstairs, I'll sleep at the top of the stairs. Make sure nothing gets done. Vervanen's gonna perch. He's going to sit cross-legged in a meditation with his uh, wings wrapped around himself for the first little bit. For the first hour, anyway. As you come back in here to come to this room, you just notice him in one of the cab- cupboards, just curled up in a small ball with a pillow. Not a bad decision. Sebastian is going to he's going to go to a corner and uh, he's going to start praying to someone uh, Annalise being the first watch she's going to, you said there was many pillows in the, of the room and he's only taking one so I'm going to grab one of the pillows and just kind of sit off against one of the walls and just kind of like hugging and kind of just kind of like keep watch, be alert, but also just kind of in my own thoughts. I look over to see if Van is sleeping yet. You won't be able to tell. He's all cocoon it. Is Van sleeping yet? It's a sight thing. You don't hear him snoring. Do I know if he snores? Everyone snores eventually. That's a yes. Cannon, yes. Bannon snores. <laughs> Bird snores. Sounds Don't like sleep. ostrich noise. <laughs> Do 
Herbs. Herbs. Anyways, I tell him to go to sleep. Any reaction? Vannon. Nope, no reaction. If you won't sleep... If, if you're capable of deep enough meditation, you still don't really pay attention to the outside world. It's almost like sleeping. I shake my head. I feel comfortable in the knowledge that he won't not sleep and put us at a disadvantage tomorrow. So, your watch goes a little... What's the phrase? Hair on end? With all the noise mm -hmm. going on? Makes you feel a little worried as the house shakes as if being rocked by a hurricane every other like 15 minutes. It's never exact. It's always at random yeah. times as if a great force is just beating against the house. Though, much to what Drake said, his fortifications seem to be holding up well. As your watch almost goes completely uneventful as the lumbering vision of the oddly proportioned Sarandal leans forward, rubbing his temple around the second into third hour of your watch. Welcome back. How are you feeling? Like I haven't had a drink in over 15 years. It's probably true. The others are sleeping. Do you want to come over talk over here? He rubs his eyes as he stands up. Looks around. Where am I? Um, we found a young man's house. It seems to be well fortified. We're spending the night here to evade... And I wait for a bump to make my point clear. Ah, oh, shit. How long has That's the sun been down? Three, four hours? Oh. Guess like I got nothing else to do. He moves over as he just plops down next to you. For the next ten hours. We got a little bit of time. So, I apologize, I didn't get your full story earlier. You were a, a fighter in Grotto. Oh yeah, the best there was. And they used to call me Sarandal the Gormasher. Back in my day. Gormasher? Sounds pleasant. Um... What exactly is your history here in this town? If you don't mind me asking. I do. To be forthright, um... We actually found a note, um... Explaining a little bit of it. I was hoping to hear in your own words. He looks to be going behind his back as he pulls out a leather water skin as he looks at I kind of give him a look as he's like reaching for something I kind of give him like a in case he's like reaching for a knife or something so I'm watching I'm watching very closely but he pulls out a water skin continue he pops a cork and stops as you're looking he's like I know those eyes he, as he takes a swig of it <sighs> just being cautious nah that's not caution that's judgment Not what I intended. Sorry if I offended. Well, I've had always like that. He says as he takes another swig of his water, or swig of his water skin. You used to live here. You were. heavy in your cup. Is that correct? Anna 
Cron? No. She had a daughter. And she left. You say that. The tension in his grip on the water skin kind of tightens as you watch clear liquid, much to your surprise, pours out from it. Oh, bigger. As it doesn't seem to have any stench of alcohol at all. Yeah, I figured. Pretty good alcohol here. He pulled out a water skin, you never know. As he kind of paused hmm. looking at you as you say that. His and face went... hardened. And then you went to Grotto to find her. Somewhere along the way became a fighter. We're trying to piece together the story of this town. We want to trust the people fighting with us. Not to say I don't trust you, I just... He's says as he burps you don't need to trust me mm. nobody I trusted me here anyway nobody trusted me to be a good father only thing you need to believe is that I'll either die doing your job he says pointing at you or Live long enough for you to build me a fantastic statue. Hmm. Why do you want a statue here? It doesn't seem like this town ever showed you much love. Why do you care? Kind of just chuckles as he starts to use water he wasted to help finite his, or thin out his mustache into curls. As a point. So that if I die, which I will die, God forbid whatever happened here is gonna claim my life too. At least... My daughter finally will have something to look up to instead of whatever failed memory she has as me from the last time I saw her. Did you find your daughter then? In Grotto? <sighs> he says as he just tosses the water skin across the room angrily. Sorry, I just... Trying to understand. Not a single bloke knew anything I was saying. I went all up and down that place. Do you what know what it's found... like to sleep in a shit den for cows? Because no one else will hold you up because you look like a mute. Well, I did. Fall too long. I'm sorry that happened to you. Couldn't have been easy. Ah, could have been worse. Could have been those poor blokes working on the farm all their lives. It's not too bad, working on a farm. You obviously haven't worked in a farm in Grotto. I can't say that I have. One stage away from slavery, I say. <sighs> I'm sorry for bothering you over so many questions. Uh, you, you should get some rest, some actual rest, not just unconsciousness. I'll give it time, I'll be fine. The note we found. It mentioned that when you came back here, you came back changed. Why did you come back here? You don't strike me as a man who'd easily give up on something. If you didn't find your daughter, why, why return? Isn't that obvious? 
I can't find her. The whole point that they teach you when you learn to be a woodsman is when you get lost, you go, go looking for the people you lost. You plant your fucking legs and you stay put. Figure, she had enough sense to run away. Maybe she might have it in her to come back to see if I'm dead or not. So you... You have a stake then in helping us clear this town. Getting back to a place where she'd want to come back to. His face re-hardening. He doesn't say anything, but... Against everything that his persona has shown. Against everything he's said. He just gives one brisk head nod. Thank you. You're doing good for the town. Good for your daughter. Good for yourself. It's all valuable. It's nearing the end of my watch. I should get my own rest. Yeah, you do that. Black bags underneath a pretty girl's face doesn't look anything natural. <laughs> Good night, Scariel. Sir Real. Shit. Sir Randall. Sir Randall. As you're going, uh, he's kind of turns to. How old are you again? Young enough. Uh, did I not write this down? No, I did. I um, just recently had my 20th name day. Does it show? That sounds like a like... loaded question. <laughs> I still feel too young, too inexperienced to be part of this, but... <laughs> Someone has to. Earlier this year would have been Lucina's 21st. Lucina. Obviously named after. I said obviously named after, and then I trailed off because I know Lucina's a name in the Fire Emblem lore, but I don't know it, so I just was like... Nothing for this. Okay. Lucina's later games. Dang it. I thought I had knowledge. I don't. Um, uh, it's a lovely name. Took it from my mother. Oh. I look aboard Kane, who's supposed to take neck watch. Um, I kind of nod and wander away from Suriel to see let me go without another word. He does. Cool. I want to tiptoe up the stairs and check on Vannon. I don't want to wake him up. I want to just like make sure the like color is coming a little bit back to his cheeks. Kind of see that he's resting, healing, all those things that I can actually do for him. John's got a plate on the stealth check, please. Not Scram! Sorry, I misspoke. Vannon! I meant Vannon! No, I'm just sneaking upstairs in plate armor. I know! Uh, I'll take off my plate armor. I'm going to bed. I don't want a point of exhaustion for sleep. Wait, is that a thing in this game? In this edition, if I don't take off my plate armor, do I get a point of exhaustion? Yeah, it sounds like fun, sure. Oh shit, you can't just make up rules on the fly like that, that's bullshit. I take off my plate armor so I can go to bed. Clink, 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 clink. Then I go sneak up and see if Vannon's okay. Passing 16. You're asleep! It's just let me story-wise it. <laughs> Where's my stealth? Means I'm at disadvantage, so passive 12. My stealth sucks. Nope. <laughs> so it doesn't help Vannon that when you passed out, you weren't ready for it, so you just wake up afraid. 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to Yeah, if you. I wake up in a flurry of feathers, feathers go flying everywhere. Sorry. Didn't mean to wake you. Just a huge drool mark going down the side of his face. <laughs> I'll I'll go back. You look fine. You look better. This is okay. It, it, Glad you're doing better. I'm from my watch now. No, no, no. You sleep. Okay. I turn. I I clunk down the stairs with my terrible, terrible stealthiness, and. I give a minute to not be awkward. And I wake up Kane. I make him take watch. Oh, it's my turn already. Yes. I, we agreed not to wake up Sebastian. He looks like he could use his rest as well. All right, I'm going to go sleep now. Annalise? Yes? You did good today. He would um, just give you a head nod before standing up and seeing that Sir Randall is up as well, just moving in his direction and they seem to spark up a small conversation as well as you prepare yourself to sleep. So, because I forgot, who was he supposed to wake up next? Scram! Alrighty. Big old tough guy. Scram along a ding dong. Sure. You are joused awake. I'm such a bolt right now. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yep. Yep. I'm here. It's your turn for your watch. Oh, yep. So, feels. <clears throat> Anything happened? Like the door was opening, but. Go okay, fix the heads up. Scram just wanders over and leans on the door. <laughs> Kane just nods and goes back to bed. Sleep well, Your Majesty. Meanwhile, as you're up, just looking around the room. Van, and you're up the stairs or at the bottom of the stairs? At the top. So Van is nowhere to be seen in here currently, and the rest of the group is sitting in, sleeping in the main area. Oh, I know who was going upstairs. Like, went into meditation mode while we were still sorting that watch. Yes. I should know roughly where he is. I poke my head around the stairs to see if he's still there. Oh yeah, he's still there. Yep, sounds. Also with you in this watch is Sarandal. Let's give him a nod. It's surprisingly well, so mate. Say that one more time. You did surprisingly well today, mate. And the rest of you were surprisingly slow. Well, I'm a big guy. I carry things. I'm not supposed to be quick. I'm surprised the toothpicks were able to keep up. Yeah, they could like that. Oh, when did you learn to fight like that? Was it in the pits? What did you know beforehand? I didn't learn that in the pits. I learned that before I got to the pits. I learned that before I got my daughter. You had the daughter? Oh yeah, of course you had the daughter. Sorry about that. I know. It's not easy. Guess not. Guess a man can't have his prophecy. Apparently. It's kind of such shrugs. You say consultation. I sort of know what you're going through. <laughs> really? Yeah. And a daughter. You had a daughter. Ad. Kind of sniffles some imaginary snot. And 
What happened to it? Same reason I left town. Fucking monster showed up. She make it? Shakes his head. That sucks, mate. I'm right. Listen, I'm not really good with the mushy stuff, but. <laughs> so I just laughs in the room, I mate. Don't worry about it. History. I'm sure you'll find something. We always so, do, don't we? So it like knocks on the wall. That's why I'm here. This is my something. It gives you an appreciative nod at that. You drink. I'm going to pull out this water skin. It's only water, but I can make it taste like whatever the hell I want. You know, I heard those really prancy, preppy types go on and on about that thing called pomegranate juice. I always want to give that a shot. Alright, pomegranate juice coming up. So, as you do it, he takes a swig. He holds it for about two seconds before spewing it all over the place. It's kind of laughs. It might just be the way I remember it tasting, but I don't like it either. I expect this to be just for princes and kings. Have you ever drank caviar? It's just fish crap, huh? Terrible. What, them being too busy sitting up on a high throne makes them lose their taste buds? I think it's just because no one else wants to eat it, it makes it rare or whatever. <sighs> Shit. I know. Those mouthfuls you just wash it down. I think I'll just have the water. <laughs> Click my fingers again to get rid of the taste. So as you guys finish that little bro bonding, during your watch, I need you to make a perception. Oh joy! The, the most perceptive man alive. Do I get assistance from Sarandon? Yes, sure. Thank you. I need it. Didn't actually need it. As you're paying attention to the sound, during your watch, near the end, the noises begin to wane as it starts to sound more like light rainfall. As you swear to God or whichever you follow, soft singing coming from outside. Are there any cracks, like, in the door or the windows? Nope. Everything's very tightly sealed. What's the singing sound like? Male? Female? It sounds feminine. Soft. A melody akin to a funeral song. So it pokes around them. We heard this before. Does this happen? He listens before shrugging. Depends on the time of day or night. Don't be worried, someone's out there. Was someone decent? Frankly, I don't give a shit. It's the middle of the night. Anyone out there is dead. Um, 
I'll, I'll get up and I'll give my pal on the shoulder. Keep an eye on the door. Go and peek from, um, try and get a peek from upstairs. I don't suggest it. Well, it's good thing I'm stupid then, isn't it? He walks up. As you walk up, you move past the still sleeping body of Vannon. Yeah, I've got like 16 decks, so should be right to turn past. Which room do you want to go to? Um, the kids' room, the empty one. As you go in there, much to what you were told, doesn't seem to be much of a room. Everything's boarded up. Yeah, I'm going to go over to... Do I see, is the kid in there, or is he in the master bedroom? He's in neither. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just go over to the window and just sort of slightly prise off one of the boards. Just at, like, a finger's width, just so I can get an eye past. Go ahead and make a sleight of hand. Yeah. Against Vannon's sleeping passive. Sure. Here we go. Twelve. Ten. Van and you here. Trying to sneak in the kids' room. Someone's got over your shoulder. Shh. Something singing outside. I don't know what. Singing? Listen. As he points it out, you also too seem to hear it, and with the board removed, makes it a lot easier. I'm not. For... I am not removing the board. Can I just say that? Like, imagine slightly moves the window. I like slightly just notch it down a little bit. Still got it's one not, nail in there. Just... <laughs> so still moved. Guess you would have had to remove at least two nails to do that. I'm pivoting it, not completely removing. So as you look out the window, you see amongst the darkness, which seems to be a swirling abyss out here, a singular figure dressed in white, a sun hat adorned over their head, their back always seeming to be angled directly to your vision, so you can't see it though they almost seem to illuminate in the darkness that is this abyss of moving winds and snow yep nope board back <laughs> I've seen enough and what is it? it's a woman in a hat dressed all in white just glowing are there any of those creatures around her? tons Sorry? It's like a blizzard of them just blew everywhere. Could you see through her or did she appear solid? Couldn't see her face. But she looked creepy as hell. I don't want to notice us, so I'm gonna head back downstairs and all my way against the door just in case. So if you're awake, keep on the window for me, please, mate. I'll let you know if she moves. Don't look. Don't look out the window. Look at the window. <laughs> that window she comes in. Don't peek out. Out is bad. What? What? Just walk past and give me a pat on the shoulder. <laughs> he just stares at you with his eyebrow raised. So as he leaves the room, Bannon, what do you do? As I'm walking on the stairs, can I quick religion check? See if I ever heard anything like it. I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. Shit be scary, Shit be man. Scary. Um, That's a whole heap of notes. Sebastian is gonna... Uh... He's gonna wake up just like two 
drink out of his water skin and whatnot. And um, would I be able to hear it from upstairs? Let's see. Go ahead. And as you're just getting up and just looking around, rubbing your eyes and taking in your environment, go ahead and roll a perception. All right, excellent. Oh, God, yeah, you hear that. I hear it, and I think to myself... Do you hear that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, let's just uh, skip me over for now, and I'll let the sound go away. Well, that's fine. We were about to take a break anyway. So before we okay. go on break, Vannon, what were you gonna do after being left alone in the kids' old room? I'm gonna look out the window. Look out or at? Out the window. <laughs> so as you go to the exact same board and <laughs> look out the window itself, you pierce the wood as you look to see what it is that Scram saw before. As you see nothing but swirling darkness and snow. The wind and movement of creatures in the distance still ever present but the immediate visage of whatever Scram saw not in sight until nothing but a darkened face with red eyes appears directly in the slit bloodshot looking directly in at you oh god I poke it in the eye I throw a dart kill it just three Stooges style. <laughs> Can I make an unarmed attack? <laughs> Before you make Why an unarmed attack, I need you to make a wisdom check. Uh, a wisdom check was... or a wisdom save? Save, save, not check. I'm getting a fucking dominator right here. Can't be possessed by anything above CR 28. <laughs> Below CR 28, sorry. As yeah. you feel... An unbelievable dread begin to creep up at the bottom of your the pit of the stomach as you quickly quell it and bring your fingers out and attempt to poke it in the eye. But before we do that, we're gonna go on break. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. We're gonna go ahead and take a quick ten to fifteen minute break and then we're gonna be back for the last part of Heart of Ruin. Let's see what happens next. So I can't I can't believe you. Thank you guys for watching. At the window. At the window, not through the window, not outside. <laughs> outside is bad.